For all your Roto World player news, go to NBCSports.com. And last night, Thursday night football, Steelers, Titans, the Steelers just keep finding a way somehow to win, even when it's ugly. Obviously, at the top, we show Deontay Johnson gets a touchdown. It's been a long time yeah. since Deontay Johnson has scored. And we got to hear from him after the game on staying confident and staying composed while not getting in the end zone and what it meant to him on Thursday Night Football to do that. With my teammates, Kenny, whoever it was that was coming up to me, I was just trying to, you know, show love, you know, because everybody put in a lot of work. 600 plus days is a long time. Yeah. How did you grow as a person, as a player, through some of that adversity? Uh, it was tough, you know, just really how I just carried myself each and every day, not trying to think about it, but at the same time, it's like, okay, I got to figure out ways uh, if I got to do something different or, to, you know what I'm saying, on certain routes or whatever it was, but, you know what I'm saying, just being myself and not pressing each and every week, just letting the ball find me, just keep getting open, and uh, that's what happened. The last time Deontay Johnson scored a touchdown in fantasy was January 3rd, 2022. This is from Yahoo Fantasy Sports. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers was a, an MVP candidate on the number one NFC seed Packers. Ben Roethlisberger was the Steelers quarterback. The Titans were the number one seed in the AFC. The NFL's first ever week 18 hadn't been played yet. It's been right. a while right. for Deontay. I was still at ESPN. That's right. I hadn't met either you guys. No. You hadn't lost an Emmy to Todd Zeal yet. <laughs> I hadn't lost. I hadn't even left home yet. Jay, I was still in high school. Jay yeah. didn't work for yeah. NBC Sports at that time either. No. Jay was, no. Jay was still I was, I was not watching Talladega Nights. Jay, right, yeah. Exactly. Jay was not watching Talladega Nights. Lots, <laughs> lots happened since then. I like the question in the interview. What have you learned in the 600 yeah. days? So yeah, it's like not it's like he's been dead. I mean, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or or been out of, out of the country. He's been Did a productive they, wide receiver right. in the NFL. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. In I a mean, bad situation. Right. Exactly. What what lessons can you learn from this? I don't know. <laughs> maybe my quarterback. You know, yeah. Maybe we've had bad quarterback yeah. play the last couple of years. Like, Pressers are rough. And they're getting worse, I feel like. Just I being just, honest it's, here. It's, it's Some of it is brutal. Like, yes. come on. And he... Great for Deontay. Like, that's he, as great of an answer as you can give to a He answered like a pro. Yes. Jay, it's been 600 days since you've had a good take. What have you learned? <laughs> what have you learned in that, uh, over that process? You know what I learned last night, Matthew, <laughs> is, uh, so we got rid of one Ponzi scheme, which is the Alvin Kamara receptions Ponzi scheme, because yeah. he actually had a real game, so we were running back last week. There's a new Ponzi scheme, Connor. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. They I don't really know how they something. keep on doing this. It's ridiculous. They've been outgamed in all eight games this season in yep. terms of yardage, and they're five and three. Uh, they just keep on chugging along. And look, it wasn't pretty last night, but Deontay, 90 yards, seven receptions, and a touchdown. I mean, we t I was laughed at last year when I said on Fantasy Football pregame that I thought Deontay Johnson was a top 20 wide receiver in the I NFL. I had your back in that one. You Michael did have Smith my back. Is the yeah, one who, he was the one laughing. Right. My, he, 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 uh, he looked like it last night. What? He, he absolutely looked at it. I think the exciting thing here is so far this year, his average depth of target is over 11 yards. Like, they're actually targeting him deep. It hasn't been some of the, the kind of the small stuff that it's we've seen in recently where it's just been kind of this, you know, dink and dunk stuff. And I think part of that was because, candidly, Ben Roethlisberger couldn't throw anymore. Yeah. And then Kenny Pickett comes in towards the end of last year, and he's still inexperienced. But finally now, Pickett more comfortable in the offense, more comfortable in the NFL. And maybe it's just, you know, Canada is, ex you know, exploring his – uh, his play calling, but for whatever reason, they're finally taking some shots downfield and taking advantage of his speed. So to me, that's the exciting thing. Like it's now back-to-back -back games with at least seven for 85 as well, at least 75 receiving yards in three straight. Like he's locked in as a top 20 wide receiver. We always talk about this fantasy success, talent and opportunity. We know he's got the talent. You and I both agree on that. And finally, he's getting the consistent opportunity from a quarterback that's good enough to at least get him the ball and makes a point of getting the ball to him. And for all the good for Deontay Johnson, the flip side of that is since Deontay's return in week seven, it's been tough sledding for George Pickens here, Matthew, where last night should have had the touchdown. He didn't get That's that second point. foot in. Yeah. But the bottom line is two of the last three weeks, he has not been very productive and he is not the guy in this offense right now. I guess so. I, yes, he is not the guy. The, we, that's no question about it. He is definitely not the guy. But again, you look at there. I mean, look at it there on your screen at the bottom. Like, he was second on the team in targets in a game in which they didn't throw very much and was kind of an ugly game on a short week. They didn't throw very much. And second on the team in targets. And, and right, to your point, Connor, he gets half a foot in. He got, basically got one and a foot in. One and half of a foot in. And, the, and the, the, the first part, you see it here on your screen. This is the thing. He gets one down, and then just right there, um, it's his, uh, his left foot doesn't get all the way in. Just the, the toes of the left foot uh, hit the white chalk. And so... If that touchdown scores, I think people aren't as panicked about this as well. And so that was just 
sort of bad luck is <laughs> him there catching one hand. <laughs> We've he is too talented yeah. for me to panic here. I, I mean, I started him last night. I'm obviously bummed about it in a 16 team league. I had to start him. So I'll still start him next week against Green Bay. I especially with 10 days to prepare. Pickens is also running a crossing route on third down where Kenny P is wide open. It yeah. was a basic regulation pass. Kenny Pickett just missed it. I mean, Kenny Pickett, his numbers in the end were okay enough and he got the ball to Deontay, but he did not play great It's a Kenny last Pickett night. experience yeah. right now. I think like Will Levis' stats are worse. I thought Will Levis had a better game than Kenny yeah. Pickett. No, I agree. Look, like, like, Kenny, I think the jury is still out on Kenny Pickett as a viable you know, NFL caliber starting quarterback, no. but... He has been good enough to get the ball to Deontay Johnson, and I guess I'm not I'm not ready to panic yet on George Pickens. Disappointing game, but uh, I don't know. I you know you're you're telling me he's getting he's going to be second on the team in targets, and he's going to get end zone looks like more often than not. I feel like that's going to work out. In the Steelers split backfield between Jalen Warren and Najee Harris, a productive night here, Jay. Jalen Warren makes the most of the carries. <laughs> you're Najee Harris. 11 Jay. for 88, 25 yards and three catches. But Najee Harris gets the touchdown with his 16 carries and 69 yards. He also caught two passes, both viable fantasy running backs on Thursday Night Football. Jay, yeah. it's been 600 days <laughs> since people were excited to have Najee Harris on their fantasy team. Has that changed? What have you learned in those 600 days? Well, the problem is, is that even in his really good game, he kind of got outplayed by Jalen Warren <laughs> a little bit. Which is a shame, but I'm actually playing Connor in fantasy this week. Which oh, you are in our league, which I didn't no, realize. I had Pickens, so I'm in trouble. You had already. Pickens, and I was laughed at for building my team preseason around the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Rightfully well, so. Well, how do you yes. like me now? Najee Harris <laughs> yeah. and Deontay Johnson both had massive games. Pat Frymuth on IR. I won't talk about him, but uh, no, it was good for Najee, and also just good for the run game in general. Look, the Titans' run defense isn't what it was last year, Correct. but it's still a solid unit, and for them to do that is very encouraging. I, I think the the positive of Harris was. Um, 60% um, of the snaps, which is a season high. He, since week three, he's averaging at least 16 touches. So the volume has been there as well. And he's now had a double-digit target share. Like, they're starting to involve him in the passing game a little bit. You like that he converted the touchdown. Like, again, I'm uh, clearly, jokes aside, I'm not the biggest Najee Harris no, fan. But, like, honestly, like, yes, I, I think if you are a Najee, if you have Najee Harris on your roster, you're encouraged by what you saw last night, despite the fact that, that to your point, Jay, Jalen Warren played really well, uh, you know, as well. 14 touches, that's tied for a season high. He's now had double-digit fantasy points in four of the last five. He is very much a viable flex. And what's exciting is, is it just wasn't all passing down work. Like, they used him between the tackles. They used him as a running back. It really felt like, you know, that, again, maybe this is because Matt Canada was on the sideline and not in the booth. They made such a big deal about right. that. So but funny. for whatever reason, the fact is, is that unlike previous iterations where it was just like, oh, Harris is back there, he's running. What Warren's back there, it's a passing play. They used Warren as a running back. They used Harris as a receiver, which is good because both guys have those skill sets. Both of those guys uh, are versatile enough that you can sort of mix and match, and it keeps the defense off a little bit. One of the plays you just saw there, if you're listening uh, and you didn't see it, was, you know, Harris came very close to scoring another touchdown as well, out of bounds like at the one. You know, so um, I think you're encouraged if you have either of these guys. Harris is a borderline RB2, and Warren's still a very viable flex. Again, Pickens, too, also, I think it's just a viable yeah. wide this, receiver three. This team as well, the Steelers, in the next six weeks, they have games home to Green Bay, Arizona, and New England, and then a game at Indianapolis. So this team somehow is going to be like eight and five uh, and right in the playoff right. mix, and they're going to be in game scripts where they'll be able to run the ball. That, yeah, I, yeah. I, and, but, so Green Bay at Cleveland at Cincinnati. So the next yep. two of the next three are, are tough, but again, like, I don't mind stashing these guys as you start looking ahead to the playoffs. Again, you know, like after Besides they it's get Arizona to, New England Indy, which is that's exactly, golden. Exactly. As you're heading towards the playoffs, yeah. And the Steelers are, are getting good play out of their first round pick in Broderick Jones on this offensive line. For whatever reason, they didn't go to the year playing him, but he has upgraded this unit yeah, and yep. that's gonna help the running backs as well. Over on the Titans side of things, Will Levis up and down night. He's 22 at 39, 262 yards. He throws the interception at the end of the game. And we got to hear from Mike Rabel on his thoughts on Levis's performance against the Steelers right after this one. There we go. Fairly well, you know, again, no, no, no delay of games, um, getting, getting us in. And, and again, there were some things that you know, will have to be better as, as far as just directionally. And, and but, you know, I think that it's, it, it, it was, again, we, we lost, so I'm not going to sit there and, glorify that uh, in his performance, but there was some good throws. There was, you know, some good protections close on a couple runs. Third down was, was certainly uh, 
large factor in, in this game. So you see Levis' numbers through his first two NFL starts right here, guys. Yeah, I like the headline, levitating. Nice. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Never uh, put that together. Appreciate that. I, I like a good pun. I'm a fan of a good pun. Uh, really, yeah. I mean, and what, by the way, Vrabel's right. I mean, the fact is, is that Will Levis was making his second start on the road on three, da you know, on three days rest. And like the, it, the reason the Titans lost this game is they couldn't get off the field on third down. The Steelers converted for an offense that isn't all that good. The Steelers converted way too many third downs in this game. And so let's not on Will Levis. I know we had the pick at the end. OK, fine. But understand that uh, number one is, is that like, you know, uh, TJ Watt and company were all over this kid. There were some good protections, as Vrabel says. Many not. But, uh, and many, many that were not. <laughs> that when he said that, I was like, ah. <laughs> And many good protections. And then also, uh, there was also the fact that, you know, Traylon Burks, awful injury. We're all rooting for the best and hoping for good news. Seems like positive signs from some of the news that's trickled out since then. But, like, now he's got to go out there. Like, DeAndre Hopkins is, like, triple covered, double and triple covered. And then he's got no one else out there to get separation, no. you know, and he's trying to make something happen. They've got no timeouts. He's trying to force it. They have to score a touchdown. They're down by four. They can't just kick a field goal. So I, I don't really – I know we had a couple of dropped passes, picks, you know, picks that should have happened that got dropped. But dropped. But I'm, I am more pro Will Levis than not after that game. Uh, the, the, for fantasy purposes, I don't know that I'm picking up and starting him anytime soon. At Tampa Bay, at Jacksonville, home to Carolina, home to India, the next four. So not a schedule that scares you, although the Jags playing really good defense. You don't love that. Um, I don't know that I'm picking up and starting him anytime soon unless you're in a super deep two-quarterback league. But I think for the skilled players that we care about, Henry and, and, uh, and Spears, DeAndre Hopkins, maybe Chigakonkwo, we'll see uh, if and when Traylon Burks is back. Uh, I think he's going to open up this offense. Yep. And the, the, here's the key thing that I think. 50% of his passes this year for Will Levis. Again, small sample size, but as we got to deal with. 50% of his passes this season, this season are either behind the line of scrimmage or 15 yards or more downfield. He's either chucking it deep with that cannon of an arm or he's dumping it off. And so that's a, that's a developmental thing to me. For it, sure. Right? And what he's comfortable with. Right. Exactly. Um, but but what but for me and then I, I want you to talk about Levis here, Connor. But what for me, I think that's exciting because I think that gives value to Tajay Spears, who they involve. Again, I know he didn't do anything with it last night on the road to Pittsburgh, whatever. But like he's going to, they're going to be a more aggressive downfield, and he's also going to involve the running backs in the passing game more. And I think those two things are exciting for us that have the complementary Titans on our fantasy teams. You know, kind of what to me is most encouraging about Levis last night is that. Coaches tell us what they think of their players with their play calling. And last night, Will Levis dropped back 44 times and they ran the ball 24 times. This is a very conservative offense typically. And that tells me that Vrabel has a certain degree of confidence in Will Levis that he wouldn't usually expect with a rookie quarterback. Which makes you bang your head against the desk, Jay, that they did run on third down at the yeah. end of the game there because he, they do trust him early in games. And you see what he, how... We talked about this, Jay, before the show, just how tight of a spiral he throws really to mm -hmm. all angles of the Crisp. field. Why, very Chris, when you watch him at Kentucky, throwing outside the numbers, they didn't ask him to do it a lot. But when he did it, it looked as good as anyone in the country at times because he's got a big time arm. Yeah. You see the release. Uh, he hangs in the pocket as well as any young quarterback I've seen in a long time. Like he yeah. will get the absolute you know what kicked out of him. And against that Steelers front, you're going to. The Titans offensive line isn't any good. Yeah. And he, you know what, it's, it's going to be growing pains. He's literally going to get hit a lot. But at least they are taking the training wheels off in certain spots and saying, utilize what you're best at because that's why we brought you here and the rest will follow. I mean, in the first half, he looked like Dak Prescott. Like, like right now, it was incredible. Uh, and then it fell off a little bit, but uh, I think very encouraging overall. And it'd be interesting to see just how Tannehill, who is still on the team and did not get traded, does he just come and take the job back at this point? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they're right? three and five. Yeah. They're three and five at this point. Don't you play sort of feel like play, you got to play should. Levis? He's yeah. the future. That's what they should do. And they should have honestly traded Tannehill. team looks Tannehill. better. The team looks they better. Should, they should have traded Tannehill. I don't understand. I don't understand why they didn't trade Tannehill. I don't understand why the commanders didn't trade Jacoby Brissett. Um, you know, um, and there's one other guy that I didn't understand why they didn't trade. But anyway, whatever. Like, you know, I, I don't get why you, you know, and, and I'm glad they traded uh, they traded Josh Dobbs there. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Hey, oh, and, and the Va Raiders. This is the other one. I don't know why the Raiders didn't trade Jimmy Garoppolo. That makes no sense to me. You know, like, fire McDaniels a week later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, tr before you bench... Money? I, 
No, I but like, it's the only thing I can think you're of. You're telling me somebody out there wouldn't have taken Garoppolo. There are teams out there that like. No, uh, the problem is, is that he had the Detroit gap the day before the trade deadline, maybe. So I'm not sure Minnesota wants 11 million on their books for next year. Maybe after not, that. but like, but it's going to be 11 million on the Raiders' books, aren't you? Like, hey, we'll give us a late pick and take six million dollars yeah. off of, of this right. off find of our hands to, or whatever. Yeah. Find a way. Yep. Like, oh, I agree. there's a deal to be had for Garoppolo, and instead you're just going to eat the money. And again, it's just whatever. Bad franchises can be bad franchises, but. Um, all that, but uh, by the way, we had a good night betting. By the we way, did. the uh, the under hit, which yep. was which was my bet. The under hit, never in doubt, <laughs> never in doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was thirty six and a half. It ends at thirty six. Of course, sweating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Never, never in doubt. But the under did hit, as did uh, what was Alex Highsmith. Alex who, uh, Highsmith took him over point early. two five sacks. He got two sacks, and he had a third one taken away by a penalty as well, which uh, had nothing to do with the play, which is we, frustrating because that was the first one. We have to ask a DraftKings for alt sacks yeah, alt going sacks, forward. Yeah. I mean, that's the real DGen yeah. betting, but yeah. alt sacks, you know, plus 400 for <laughs> yeah. two sacks from Highsmith. Yeah. Like, yeah. Something to think about for our friends at DraftKings. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Titans' backfield, you know, we mentioned it a little bit. Tajay Spears stays involved, season high in snap rate. He did have four catches. The problem is, Barry, they only went for four yards, and of course this was a classic Derrick Henry game. Plenty of volume, and he gets the touchdown. I, I'm still hanging on to him because I think he's still a viable flex in deeper leagues, and obviously he's a very important insurance running back for those who have Derrick Henry on your team. I, again, I think the fact that Levis is like it's either – Levis is more willing to dump off to the running back than it seems Tannehill was, so I think that's exciting. Uh, again, he, I know he didn't do anything yesterday, but I do like the fact that he caught four balls and he's, he played 60% of the snaps. He ran 28 routes. Both of those were season highs. So I – the, the workload is coming. There's the production hasn't been there yet, and I believe the production will be coming, especially, again, as we talk about. They're three and five, and who knows how much longer Derrick Henry has. They need Tajay Spears to get more reps. They need Will Levis to get more reps for I think the future the, of this franchise. I think the key there as well is the Jacksonville won last week, and now Jacksonville six and two. Like, the division is getting away from the Titans in a yeah. hurry, so you would think that they would go uh, into the youth movement more quickly than they might normally. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own Fantasy Football Happy Hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.